Hey, what's up everybody? This is Osric501, and today I'm going to be talking about the Fallout 76 patch that's going to be coming December 4th. These are the patch notes for that. And basically at the first thing in this article, they're basically telling us that on December 11th we're also getting another update, which we knew about. Um, but that is pretty good that they're doing a patch December 4th and 11th. So they're on a pretty good roll, and if they keep doing weekly updates, depending on how much like fixes and stuff like that are in them, um, at the end of this year, late end of this year, or early next year, we could possibly see the game being com completely bug-free, or basically as bug-free as games can get, um, with hopefully a big increase in performance across all systems. Now, they did say that before the first patch that we had, I think a week or two after the game released, that was like super big, specifically on consoles, was going to be much smaller. All the other patches after that were going to be much smaller. And they give you the download size of 3 gigabytes on consoles and 36 megabytes on PC. It's still slightly big for consoles, but I assume that just has something to do with creating games on consoles. And PC is probably much easier for file changes and stuff like that. But we go into general, it's patch 1.02.0. So general, performance PC frame rates are once again uncapped, however reaching very high frame rates will no longer cause movement speed to increase. This was originally fixed in the November 19th patch. Now I'm not actually certain if this means they're completely uncapping it, because I thought from that patch it was technically uncapped up to what would be basically usable for most people, which is up to 144 frames. I have a 144 hertz monitor. So past that, you don't get as, it's basically diminishing returns past that, basically. But I'm wondering if it's fully uncapped now, or if it's still 144 um, frames cap. Which honestly, for majority of all people on PC, I don't think 144 frames cap is an issue at all. Especially since pretty much the best PCs probably in the world right now are still having, at least consumer PCs, are still having a pretty hard time getting to that unless they're absolutely on the lowest settings you can possibly get. Um, then we have stability. The Fallout 76 game client and servers have received a, received additional stability improvements. There's common stuff. I'd assume they're going to be doing stuff like this every single patch. Now there's nothing else for overall performance. So I'm wondering if in the stability, if there's going to be like FPFs performance increases for consoles and PC or not. Um, it doesn't really say it. They do seem to be a bit more specific with all the um, patch notes in this, a lot more than the first patch that we got like a week or two weeks after launch. So that seems to be pretty good. I'm wondering if there's other stuff that's not in here, because I would expect there to be FPS increases and just game running performance for consoles and PC to definitely be a pretty big focus because it still doesn't run that well at all on PCs or consoles. I have a mid, probably more towards top tier PC, and this game still doesn't run near as well as pretty much any other game right now, especially any other AAA game. But then we have camp, crafting, and workshops. Stash maximum stash storage has been increased by 50% to 600 pounds. This is a conservative adjustment, and we plan to increase the storage cap further in the future once we verify this change does not impact the stability of the game. I talked about that when I talked about. Um, when they told us like the overview of what these patch notes would be before we got the specifics. Um, 600 pounds is definitely a nice increase, but still pretty low. As they say here, they don't want to just, you know, increase it by a ton and then servers be crashing and people getting really bad performance and all types of stuff that could happen um, with just increasing it to a massive amount. Um, doing it in smaller chunks, even though 50% is still a decent amount increase, making sure that they don't further like mess up the game performance wise or add some type of bugs with this is definitely a really good way to do it the game's already buggy enough with bad performance not necessarily server side but doing it like this is definitely a really good way to do it um hopefully on the 11th hopefully they have enough time by this like for testing then to the 11th maybe we'll see another increase but i'm assuming it'd have to be like at least another week so they had a full week to verify that there's like no impacts on the game um stability or anything like that then we have balance which we didn't know some of this stuff actually the last one in this is something pretty good that we didn't know we'd be getting 
So first is enemies XP rewards for killing high level creatures have been reduced. Um, it depends how much this is. I don't really see a big issue with this. Leveling is actually super easy in this game. I'm like level in a, like 120 and I haven't grinded Fallout or played a ton of Fallout really in the past couple weeks to be honest. Um, leveling is pretty easy and just killing high level creatures is actually the best way to level in this game and it's pretty quick like you can kill some stuff that just gives you massive chunks of a bar for killing some high level stuff um so bosses fix an issue affecting instance boss loot players should not correctly receive two to four items per boss depending on the creature's difficulty and level um now this is instance so i'm pretty sure that would be interiors so if you load into a building load into a cave or something like that it's stuff like that now I'm wondering if this affects anything just out in the open world. Um, because there are still stuff like bugs and certain different creatures, boss creatures, which cre like bosses are what have the crown on their name that still don't drop anything. I'm wondering if that's just supposed to be like that because it's a bug and it gives you meat and stuff. Um, I'm also wondering if this is nerfing bosses inside instances. Because I know some bosses, like say Scorch outside or inside, can still drop like dozens of items sometimes with their bosses um i'm wondering if it if it'll be nerfing certain ones as well as maybe giving actual loot to some that weren't giving it before um it will definitely be something that has to be tested because it's not exactly specific on if it's a nerf or a buff to certain things this next one is i think a really good change weapons automatic weapon damage has been increased by approximately 20 percent across the board so Going by this, that's pretty much everything. That's mini guns, that's um, Gatling guns, that's you know SMGs. That's pretty much everything. I think this is a really good change um, because like melee weapons are still probably the strongest thing in the game, and thus you are super heavily built and have like an explosive shotgun or like or an explosive weapon or something with double shot or something like that. If you're just Comparing normal weapons, melee weapons are so much stronger, and it's very good to be able to see automatic weapons getting a pretty decent sized damage increase, because there are still some of the funnest weapons to use as well. Melee is kind of was the strongest thing and kind of the most boring thing, because you're just basically using one of two, either a heavy attack or a light attack, and it, it was pretty boring. This next one is weapon effects. Hitting another player with a cry later now applies a chilled, frosted, and frozen status based on how many times they are hit. The duration of movement speed reductions applied by these effects have been slightly decreased. So I think they specifically said before, which is more specific, which is weird since these are the specific patch notes, that it was being able to like freeze players for like two hours and slow them for like two hours, and now it's going down to 30 seconds, which makes sense. Um, I really haven't seen anyone using a cryo later anyway. They don't seem that great. I mean, now I don't know if they would be able to be frozen before, but now if you're able to actually fully CC and stun somebody, they will probably be pretty decent in PvP, even though PvP really isn't much of anything right now. But anyways, um, bug fixes for stability and performance for console. I don't know why there's console then specifically Xbox. So I guess the first one's both consoles and then Xbox or all consoles. Fix an issue that could cause the player to encounter an infinite load screen when signing out of their console account while playing Fallout 76. Pretty good change. Infinite loading screens probably, that's a bug, so there's another bug fix. Xbox address a crash that could occur while sending multiple team invites immediately after exiting Fallout 76 to a player who's not a friend. Just another weird interface bug, I'd assume. Then we have general. Now this first one is pretty massive. Power armor. Fix an issue affecting power armor frames that could prevent the player from exiting their power armor. Now if you guys haven't had this glitch, I've had this glitch and it was horrible. It basically breaks your game. Basically what would happen, you'd get in a power armor, your person would go invisible, so inside the power armor, the small spots you could see your character, you wouldn't be able to see it to be invisible. The power armor would be there. You couldn't get out. There was one way to fix it to be able to get out, but that would delete your frame and you wouldn't be able to get back in one without it happening again. There was a pretty complicated way to fully fix this. But you'd have to do some stupid stuff like drain a core, make sure you have no other um, cores on you, then kill yourself, then load back in, then completely log out of the game, then load back in. It was pretty stupid. So this is a game-breaking bug that is being fixed. 
Now, I think the patch notes before, the less specific ones, um, said that there was still a power armor glitch possible that they were working on fixing something like that. So I don't know if this is fully fixed, but I'd assume this is going to fix a the problem for a majority of people, which is very good. Any game breaking bugs they can fix, the sooner the better, and they're pretty needed. Nuke silos. Flip lords inside nuke silos no longer display portions of launch codes too soon after the codes were reset for the week. I didn't actually know flip lords in nuke silos gave you any information. Um, when we did it, we just killed uh, we just farmed a bunch of the officers till we got enough coats to basically fill in the rest um camps workshops and crafting camp moving camp location will now correctly move standalone items by the player into the build menu store tab so if you don't know what's happening even if you logged into a server and your camp was moved because someone was camped there or just a glitch because that's also happening um a lot of times stuff that's not connected that's just singles like outside your base wouldn't store correctly sometimes it would sometimes it wouldn't um so sp specifically i would have like water purifiers and generators outside and i would always lose those if my base was ever moved the rest of the base that's all connected is fine and you can replace down but the single stuff outside is um destroyed and not given back to you which is still a pretty big deal because that stuff could be pretty expensive so another pretty big bug fixed which is nice Workshops on PS4 wires no longer appear to float in midair when attempting to connect them two or more to two or more objects. Um, just another bug fix. Turrets will no longer become invisible if the players are not present at the camp and the turrets are destroyed. Um, so just an, just another basic bug fix. Perks per cards ring up a per card will no longer cause a duplicate card to appear. I've had this glitch before, but the one I had logging out and back in would actually make the duplicates go away. Hopefully soon they will fix that a bunch of perk cards just literally don't work right now. But another bug fix is good. Social um, teams fix an issue that can prevent a team from being correctly formed in game world after creating the team on the main menu when both menus when both players are using new characters. I never had this glitch, but it's still another, or I guess it's bug, another bug that's fixed, which is nice. Um, display durations for social notification have been reduced when many notifications are pin pending. This should help address an issue in which players do not see they successfully joined a team. Um, I don't know, unless like a bunch of people are spamming you, I guess some streamers maybe had an issue with this, but definitely another good thing that's being uh, fixed. Survival mutation, the electric charge and unstoppable isotope mutations no longer provide the player with bonus health. I don't know if this is a bug or just something that was supposed to be happening before i really haven't done anything with mutations yet in the game um probably something i should do but i just haven't done anything with mutations um kind of how they do it is a little weird um and i just haven't went to go farm them or anything like that because you do have to kind of farm them there's only four i think you can buy at the enclave which are so super expensive but then we have user interface afk players will now be disconnected from a game world after 10 minutes of inactivity and will prompt it with a ten, one minute time before being kicked. Um, that's pretty good taking people off the servers. It can't help with server performance. There's just a bunch of people AFK um, and letting other people get in. If say someone um, like was trying to play with a friend on the server they're on, say they're doing something they're trying to join their friend. If you didn't know there was a cap basically on servers if a certain amount of people are on them you'd get and basically a queue to get on the server but if people can just afk forever in the server um then you could have a bunch of afk afk people and no one else able to get in such a decent change atomic shop on pc cursor position will no longer be disjointed from clicks in the atomic shop while using 16 by 10 resolutions there's another fix enemies red crosshairs and enemy health bar will no longer persist on screen when an enemy is no longer in view that is very nice i don't know if you guys have ever gotten this Especially when loading in, you'll see like just a random mob's health when you load in, like their bar, like you're looking right at them. But you would have no idea where they are. And that also was very annoying when you were fighting stuff, because you'd randomly get like an enemy that's that you're not looking at that could be behind you's health bar instead of the thing you're looking at or looking close to. So that's a good change. Localization subtitles will now appear correctly and English voiceover will play for game clients and languages that do not have their localized voiceover when listening, that do not have their own localized voiceover when listening to a holotape or interacting with robots. 
Um, pit boy fixing issue that could cause duplicate data to appear in the pit boy stat and affect interfaces. I think I've had that. I think that was like, say, if you had a buff or something, it'd say it was twice, or a disease or something, it'd say twice. Respawn dying when severely over encumbered will no longer remove all map markers when attempting to respawn. Instead, the player cannot respawn at the clo nearest display or discovered map marker. So basically, what would happen? What would happen with this? This is actually how you used to do the excavator glitch. If you were um, in game that died when you were over encumbered, the only place you'd be able to spawn at was Vault 76. Um, if you want to actually spawn. Um, other than that, you'd have to log out and log back in and then it'd do what this is doing. It'd take you to your closest map marker or the last place you um, visited, basically. Um, so now, not having to log out and back in when you're over coming to die. Pretty big bug change. Quest checker quest. Objective notifications will, will no longer appear for an inactive quest immediately upon connecting to the world. That's so why I had this all the time and it was pretty annoying because I'd always go check into data and make sure because say if you're doing like a main quest or you want to do one specific quest you don't want to have all of these different miscellaneous quests being tracked um especially if you're going in and out of buildings because then it's gonna it's gonna always show you that the exit is where you need to go so i'd always have pretty much all of my quests off until i want to do one and turn that on and when you load into a world you just have a long line of like text and quests and stuff that would show you're being tracked for a little bit um that it they just disappear after a while, but it would be annoying because I'd always go in data to make sure I'm not tracking all this type of stuff. But that is all the patch notes. Um, it's pretty decent so far. They are doing a lot of bug fixes. Um, hopefully they will keep going at this pace and doing once per week. At that rate, the game could be fixed and running decently um, so they can start just mainly working on like um, new content and stuff and fixing game systems and stuff like that stuff that's not directly bugs but maybe the stuff players would want um, change in the game system stuff like that um, a lot of people some people have speculated that they're doing some bigger changes here that will be able to that will cause them to be able to fix um, a lot more bugs a lot quicker in upcoming patches um, I don't exactly know if that's true or not true I don't think anyone beside the devs know that. That'd be pretty cool if it was, so we'd be seeing a lot more bug fixes as the patches go. Um, but overall, it's a good amount of bug fixes and stuff going in the right direction. Um, I definitely hope they keep going at this speed that they're showing they will now because we have patches week to week. So hopefully they'll keep doing that, doing a bunch of fixes, hopefully getting this game to be in a really good spot so then they could just start adding new content and making this game be a overall good game that most people would think is a quality game. So subscribe if you want to see more Fallout 76 content. I'll still be doing news and stuff like that. Hopefully um, more on time instead of two days after. But let me know down in the comments what you guys think of these changes. Like the video if you like it and thanks for watching.